Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today, I want to take you through the upgrade process for the NCE PowerCab DCC system. If you remember, I installed this one here on the modules several months ago. So I want to show you now how you can upgrade these, get more power and more functionality using the NCE Smart Booster SB5. So let's go ahead and get started now. But first, let me remind you, hit that little red uh, subscribe button, and when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. Thanks now. Okay, now the first thing I want to tell you is the, what, we're, what I'm going to do today. So, I'm going to start with an introduction on why you would want to upgrade. And so that's going to be a little bit of a talking head type of thing. And for those of you who are not interested in hearing why you might want to upgrade and what the, uh, and all of the details of what uh, additional functions and, and capabilities that will give you, I will put a timestamp right here down at the bottom of this video so that you can tell where you should uh, scroll forward to uh, for the beginning of the actual demo that I will do on upgrading this power cab here on the module uh, with the SB5. So go ahead, take a look at the timestamp right here, and you can go ahead and skip forward. And then you can come back later. If you're interested, uh, based on the demo, you can take a look at all of the additional capabilities and rationale for why you might want to upgrade uh, your power cap. Now, another thing I want to point out, and this is uh, something that I uh, preach regularly when I talk about choosing a DCC system, and that is always pick a system that's going to give you a good, clean upgrade path. And but by that I mean you can buy an introductory system and then add components later, and instead of the old components being obsolete, you can use those as part of the new system. And that's something here that is very true of the power cab, because you can start with the power cab add an SB5 and go to a 5 amp system that gives you more power and more capability. And later on, if you need to, you can move up to the PH Pro, which gives you even more capability. And all of the components that you buy uh, as part of the power cab and with the SB5 can be used later on with the PH Pro. And therefore, you don't lose anything in the process. You can use every part that you uh, purchased earlier with the new system. So nothing becomes obsolete. There are systems out there where if you buy an intro uh, uh, DCC system, you're going to be looking at trying to sell it on eBay or some other forum somewhere later on uh, if you decide to move up to a more capable system. That is not something you'll have to do with the NCE power cab and their upgrade path. Um, and various other manufacturers offer the same type of approach, so you can always keep that in mind when you're looking for a DCC system. Make sure everything is forwardly compatible if you're going to upgrade to a more powerful system. Now, in order to give you an idea of the increased capabilities of moving up from the power cab to the SB5, I've prepared a comparison table for that. And so what I'm going to do now is shift to my computer, and I'll show you that table, and we'll just work down through that, and I'll talk you through all of the increased capabilities that you can get from using the SB5 to upgrade your power cap. So let's take a look at that now. Okay, so why would you want to upgrade your uh, power cab to an SB5 uh, system? Well, for one thing, as you can see here in this comparison table, right away you go from four throttles or cabs to six throttles or cabs. So that's a considerable increase in your capability to have operating sessions. You can have six different people operating trains at the same time. Now the number of, of connections for the USB, mini panel, AIU, those features, they stay the same at three for both. Uh, the maximum number of trains that you can operate though, you go from 12 to as many as 18 trains at one time. So right off, you've greatly increased your capability to operate multiple consists, multiple trains on your layout simultaneously. How about the input voltage and amps? Uh, you go from 10 to 15 volts DC at 1.8 to 3 amps, and I'll say 3 amps with an asterisk because I believe that the currently 
uh, the the power supply that they're providing is somewhere around two amps, 1.8 to two amps. They tell you you can use a three amp power supply, but it does void the warranty. So be aware of that with your power cap. Now with the SB5, you go to either 12 or 13.8 volts DC input with five amps. So you're going, uh, you're almost doubling and, and in many cases, more than doubling the amperage, which is why you can operate so many more trains with your system. Now track voltage. With the power cab, your track voltage is equal to the input voltage minus about half a volt at two amps. So once you go to the SB5, you're going to have either 12 or 13.8 volts on the track and you can, and that is user selectable with a switch on the power supply. Now the functions, they stay the same. All 29 of the NMRA approved functions are supported. Local, ad local addresses, again, they stay the same. The accessory addresses the same, signal addresses. So all that capacity stays the same. The maximum number of advanced constants still stays at 16. And you're limited to 112 through 127 for the addresses for those consists. The big jump, the old style consist, you go from four old style consist to 36 old style consist, six per cat. So you're immediately greatly increasing the, uh, the number of consists that you can operate using the old style, which uh, uh, Digitrax and I refer to as universal consist. Uh, your maximum number of recalls stays at six for both. And the interesting thing is with the programming track, you do have a program, programming track capability with the power cab, but you do not have it with the SB5. However, what you can do is you can take your power cab, set it up on your workbench, connect it to a section of track that you can use as a test track after you've installed a decoder and, or are working on a locomotive, and you can also use that for a programming track separate from your layout. So it gives you a lot more flexibility uh, in that respect because you're still able to use your old power cap. It's part of that upgrade pathway that I was talking about. You'll still be able to use your old power cap to run a, a self-contained programming track and, uh, and, and test track on your workbench. The other thing is because the power cap throttle is no longer in use with the power cab all the time. You can actually use it as a walk around throttle on your layout. So that gives you immediately a, a, a pro cab uh, to work with on your layout that you can move from one uh, connector panel to the other. Whereas with the power cab, the uh, throttle used to be stationary. You had to leave it plugged in all of the time. So you really get uh, some considerable increase in power and, uh, and, and also certain other features with going to the SB5 uh, Smart Booster in order to upgrade your power cap. Okay, let's go ahead now and take a look at how you go about installing the SB5 on the layout to replace your power cap and upgrade its capabilities. Okay, so let's go ahead now and begin with the demo on the process of upgrading your power cab system using the SB5. And what I want to show you first is the SB5, and we'll take a look at it and what comes with it and what the various uh, connections are for and, and that kind of thing. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so the first thing is, of course, the SB5 uh, Smart Booster itself. Now, SB5 just means that, Smart Booster, five amps. So you can go ahead and uh, plan on using that five amps to operate a lot more uh, locomotives and trains on your model railroad. So let's look at these various uh, components because there's a lot of ports here. Okay, first right here you have two ports that are plug-ins for your throttles. So right away you can just plug in your throttles here uh, and you'll be able to control uh, your layout without any problems at all, without having any additional uh, throttle uh, panels on the layout itself. And now this right here is the control bus. And what that does is it allows you to add additional uh, boosters uh, to this uh, setup here so that you could have an additional DB5, which is a dumb booster 
five, and that's a five amp booster that you could add on to give you a total of 10 amps of power on the layout. And then you can just daisy chain those from this particular port right here. Uh, the other thing right here, you'll notice there's a little pilot light uh, that lights up red when there's power being fed out to the truck. Over here, we have a connector here, a barrel plug connector. That's for the power from your uh, uh, power supply. And uh, you get a power supply, and I'll show you that in a minute, uh, and we'll go into that. And then right next to it, there's this removable plug-in screw terminal here uh, that allows you to attach your wires right in here, and then it's got screws down here for clamping down on them, and that is the connection to your layout. And this is the same as uh, on the power cab itself. So you can just use the one from the power cab and plug it into here, and you'll be ready to go. Now, what else, is what else is on this? There's not a lot, but if you look right here on the bottom, and I'll move in close, this is a little switch uh, to convert the smart booster into a dumb booster. So if you move up to a Powerhouse Pro uh, system, you can just flip this switch and it will shut off the DCC command station functions so that you're only using it as a dumb booster. So that gives you that upgrade path to use this with another uh, NCE DCC system. And really, that's about all there is to this. It's not very complicated. If you look here on the back, though, you'll note that we've got this aluminum panel here on the back. I haven't opened this, but I'd be willing to bet you these two screws here hold the main power uh, transistors, and this acts as a heat sink, so do not place this in a position where it's not going to be able to get air across it because it's probably used to cool the uh, to cool the device so that you don't get thermal shutdowns. Finally, there's a little screw right here. That screw is provided as a ground contact. So if you have two uh, devices, say a SB5 and a DB5 uh, hooked up together to give you 10 amps of power on your layout, then you will need to run a wire a plain copper wire between the two of them attached right here at this screw. And that's what that's for, so that you can daisy chain the ground connection amongst all of these. However, never attach this to your household wiring or your household ground. NCE uses what they call a floating ground, which means all of the different devices like this are grounded using a common wire connecting them, but they are not connected to an earth ground. So keep that in mind. So the other component you get with the, uh, with the system is this power supply. And you'll note right here there's a switch that allows you to switch between 12 volts and 13.8 volts, and both of them are at 5 amps. So you can use either of these. Now, you, of course, you'd want to use this for something like in-scale. Uh, so that you have a reduced voltage on the track, and you might even need to actually lower the voltage if you go to Z scale, for example. Over on this side, you can go to 13.8 volts for HO scale, S scale, and the like. So that's going to give you plenty of voltage on the track, and I have measured it on the track, and it does come out at exactly 12 volts and 13.8 volts on the track when you switch back and forth. Okay, the only other thing you know, the cord that comes with it, you just plug it in here, like that, and it plugs into the wall. And then it has this uh, barrel plug connector that plugs into the face of the SB5. So let's go ahead and do the installation of the SB5 here on the layout. Now, one thing I do want to point out is when you're using your uh, old power cab throttle as a standard pro cab, uh, with your SB5 or any other NCE system, uh, you have to uh, switch connectors or switch the cables because originally you got two different cables with your system. There was a cable that had a six pin connector on it and one that has a four pin connector. So when you're using the power cab throttle itself, just as a uh, plain old throttle, you want to use the four pin connector, and that's what's used for throttles. When you want to use it with the power cab uh, panel uh, for programming mode, then you use this uh, six uh, pin connector, okay? So keep those in mind and uh, dig out. Uh, hopefully you can find both of those cables. Right here is the power cab uh, panel that I originally installed. So I'm just going to pull that out here.
Now I've already disconnected the power supply that originally came with the power cap, but what I do have still is the connector cable that goes to the second uh, panel uh, at the other end on the other module. So I'm just going to disconnect that and there the power cab itself is now free. So basically then you can just set up the original power cab on a workbench somewhere with a piece of track that you can use as a programming track or a test track and then anytime you want to use it for that you just attach the original power cab throttle itself and you're ready to go. When you're done you can go back and start using your power cab again as a throttle. Also, let me point out one other thing. For $106, you can have this upgraded to wireless capability, and then you'll be able to use it with a wireless receiver on your uh, NCE system. I don't know how much the receiver costs, you can check into that, but that's a nice price for $106 to go to wireless. Also, if you do convert this to wireless, it doesn't affect all the other functionality of the uh, throttle as a power cap. So you can still use it that way even once they install the wireless transmitter in here. Okay, what I have right here looks identical to the power cab panel. However, this is what NCE calls an, a UTP. What I want to show you about this right now are the connections because you have two sockets here on the front where you can plug in a throttle. You have a socket here on the side uh, and a socket on this side. And these are six pin connectors as well. And then here on the back, we have the eight pin connector. And that's what NCE uses now for most of their uh, throttle uh, cab buses on the layout. Uh, the reason for that is this is the cable that they use. Okay, so it's a uh, Cat5 uh, cable, Category 5 data communications cable. It gives you much, much better noise rejection and, uh, and the like. So there's a lot of good reasons to use this. And you should be using this at least for uh, all new installations and for runs over 30 feet. For short runs and for what I'm going to do here on the module, you can just use the six uh, pin cables here, this six wire cable like I've got installed and daisy chain these UTPs doing that and then connect the uh, wire coming from the SB5 directly to this port here. Or you can connect it on the front. So let's go ahead and, and another thing I want to point out here is right here on the back you'll see there's a barrel plug connector and then there's a switch right here. Now what that is for is once you get to runs over 30 feet and three or four throttles you're going to need additional power to your cab bus because these, uh, these throttles do take up a certain amount of power in order to operate. And I can tell you from experience once you get more than about three or four throttles plugged in the system is going to shut down and you're not going to be able to operate. Happened at a friend's house one time for his first op session. But what you can do is you can uh, get a uh, 12 to I think 15 volt uh, power supply with a three and a half millimeter uh, barrel plug connector on the back here uh, to plug into the back here and um, oh maybe a one amp uh, uh, rating and then there's this little switch right here and you just push this to the external power or to the NCE power setting. So for if you're connecting power here to run your throttles for your throttle network you would switch it this way. Normally it's going to be operated in this position for something like this module or a very small layout. But once you get up to multiple cabs or multiple throttles, you're probably going to find you need to add additional power here on the back. Okay, let's go ahead and install this in the layout and we'll get started. So for this, I'm still using the original six pin cable that's connected to the other UTP on the additional module over there. So for this, all I'm going to have to do is connect it here and connect the SB5 to this port and we'll be ready to go. So let me go ahead and install this first. And it goes in the same way as your power cab. There we go. It's a nice tight fit, so I'm, I had to maneuver it a bit. Um, and then you just put the screws back in. Well, I had to switch screwdrivers. My trusty old Black & Decker finally died on me, it looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll get these installed uh, and make the connection.
So that's got that all inserted back into the layout. Now I'm going to have to duck under and make that connection. Okay, so I've got that installed. I've got the connection uh, made underneath to go to the additional uh, throttle panel on the other module. Now, while I was under the layout, I also connected one of these uh, six pin cables running from the connector on the side of the NCE UTP, and that will be connected right in here to the SB5 on one of the cab ports. So that's going to daisy chain it. We're going to have uh, the cab connection going out to the NCE panel here, and then uh, the other wire that I showed you going out that side and going down to the other UTP on the other module. I've already gone ahead and run the connector for track power right here, got this, and we're going to make that connection, just plug it in like so. And now we have a connection to the track power bus here on the module. Finally, I'm going to go ahead and make the connection for power with the barrel plug, like that. And I'm going to go back here and plug in. What I have here on the back of the layout is a six socket power strip with a switch, so I can just turn that on. And you can see we've got a red light here showing power is being fed out to the track. We also have a red light here now for our throttles. And if I take my power cab, I can now plug it in right here. And you can see it's going to come up ready to run locomotive 1363. So right away, I'm ready to run. So that only took a few minutes in order to swap out the power cab panel for the UTP, hook up the uh, smart booster to it, and plug in my uh, throttle and start running trains here on the layout. It really is something that uh, doesn't take any amount of time or real wiring talent, assuming you already have the power cab installed on your model railroad. Now one thing I will point out is if you remember previously, uh, I showed that the throttle here, the power cab throttle, had an amperage readout that told you how many amps or milliamps, it were, as it were, the uh, system was using at any given time uh, on the layout. Unfortunately, uh, that is not available when you switch to the SB5. It's simply a function of the power cab because it, of course, has a power supply built into it. Uh, and it can actually measure the amount of power that it's producing. It can't do that for the SB5. Now one thing that NCE does recommend is now that you're up to five, amp, uh, five uh, amps of power, and once you get several operators running trains, you're probably going to need some sort of short circuit protection for your uh, command station and boosters and things of that nature on your layout. This is the NCE EB1 circuit breaker, and you can just install that in line uh, between your uh, SB5 power output and your um, main bus, and you just literally uh, attach two wires here and two wires here, and they're marked as DCC in here and track out here. So your DCC power comes in here, your track power goes out through these two terminals, and you're protected. And this has multiple uh, amperage uh, settings, so you can go from, I think, something like 2.5 amps to almost 10 amps of protection. I've got it set right here for 4. I'll probably change it to 5 uh, for this system. And that allows you, using these little jumpers, to configure it for different amperages. So that's something, and I'll, uh, I'll put up a link to a, a video that I did on various kinds of circuit breakers, and you can take a look at that. You can also use ballast lamps, and I did a video on the improved, new and improved type ballast lamp, and of course NCE offers their own uh, ballast lamp, CP6, so you could take a look at those. Also, uh, as I mentioned, you don't get an amperage readout on the power cap. However, one thing you could consider purchasing is one of these um, DCC Concepts Alpha Meters, and uh, they will give you a voltage and an amperage readout. You just run the track power bus uh, in one end and out the other. And uh, I use this on the Piedmont Southern and love, love it because at a glance I can tell what the track voltage should be and also how many amps 
uh, are being consumed by all the locomotives that I have operating at one time. So that's something that's uh, available, I believe, from Iron Planet Hobbies here in the U.S., or you can order it directly from the DCCConcepts.com website. So as you can see here, I can now select a different locomotive. Uh, let's go with 5786 there. Select 5786 and hit Enter. And we'll be operating that locomotive now. Uh, let's change the direction to reversed and start backing up. So as you can see, you can very quickly and easily upgrade your power cab system to give you more power and capabilities and be up and running literally in just a few minutes. So give that a thought for your Christmas present this year. Well, that's a wrap for today's video. If you've been holding out on purchasing an NCE product for your model railroad, go ahead, take a look at their website. You can order directly from them or check with your local NCE dealer. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you here next week with another video from the DCC Guy. Bye now.